Good afternoon, Westwood, and welcome to the Wolverine Report. Evan Cardamino, Charlotte Lynch, Marie Fascaldo, and I'm Morgan Donahue. And today we have a special guest, folks. It is We are on the doorstep of the winter season, and we have a person that is not only just a coach for the winter season, but someone who came through the Westwood High School program, a Westwood High School Hall of Famer, uh, four-year player, hockey player, as well as four-year golfer. He was a top-line player as an underclassman when I was playing with him uh, back 20 years ago, we won't show our age. Um, 15 years uh, coaching at the high school, eight as an assistant, seven as your head coach at Westwood. And over the last 41 years of Westwood High School's playoff streak, he's been involved in 19 of them. You know, simply remarkable. Uh, he's only behind Mike Welby in that regards um, by uh, by two years. So this coach, uh, Coach Sheebit, will be passing him in the next couple of years. But we are delighted to have head coach of your Westwood boys hockey, Matt Sebit. Coach, how are you? And thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Evan. Uh, really uh, excited to be here today. You guys are doing a great thing uh, with the podcast here and uh, been tuning into all of them. So there's been a lot of legends in this seat here the last uh, month or last few months. So hopefully I can be somewhat uh, fill those shoes. Absolutely, Coach. We're, we're delighted to have you. And um, in my opinion, I think the winter season's uh, – the funnest, uh, the most exciting sports season. There is nothing like the winter season playoffs, particularly hockey, the way uh, that it goes down, overtimes, you know, upsets. One of my favorite memories uh, was two years ago, going in the, to Whitman Hanson's barn and, and winning 5-2 as a 22 seed, 23, I forget what it was. Yeah, but 22. Yeah. But um, that's what that's what great memories, uh, you know, those memories like that are some of some of my favorites. And not only just as a coach, but player, you know, um, we are, like I said, on the doorstep of the winter season. We are less than a month away before tryouts. Um, are you in hockey mode now? Uh, if not, when does that typically kind of when does that switch turn on? Is it is it on tryouts day or is there like a, a kind of uh, some advance um, when when that switch is flipped? Yeah, I think it's definitely uh, hockey mode at this point, especially now as we're flipping the calendar uh, as we're recording this here on November 1st. Um, but yeah, I think just even the last couple of weeks, um, you know, checking in with the guys with captain's practices and with um, where they're playing in the fall and then just gearing up um, with getting the team meeting locked in and just seeing the registrations come through. Yep. Um, it's definitely, it's, it always kind of sneaks up in a good way. Um, and now I think it's four weeks from Monday, we're on the ice. So, uh, definitely, definitely hockey mode now. Yeah. And the tryouts are unique because for the last, I'd say f seven years or so, the enrollment has just been huge. Um, at one point I was, I was telling the story, uh, coach Clifford last week, um, and she's got a similar situation. They have two seniors from last year. So there's only two spots open. Yeah. And you remember, uh, I think it was going from um, the the year West lost Oliver Ames to the state championship. There was maybe like two spots, three spots open on that team. Exactly, yeah. And there was like 60, 70 kids trying out. So Coach Fryer and I got to make decisions <laughs> on who's going to make the squad in like, you know, uh, during tryout week. Um, yeah. Talk us through kind of that process. How many spots are open for this year's team? And, um, you know, what is that process like on the first day of tryouts? All, and, you know, obviously it's c c technically a whole week of tryouts, but um, what is kind of that whole process from, you know, day one through up till fr uh, Friday? Yeah, uh, absolutely. In terms of, I know, like enrollment's up, but actually our numbers with the hockey uh, kind of unfortunately been a little bit down the last few years. I know we probably peaked um, – Back when I was assistant, we, I think there was a couple of years we had about 65 kids trying out. Um, and then, but we were probably always, I would say, in that 50 to 55. And then just the last couple of years, um, we've been right around like mid 30. So um, even like the last couple of years, there weren't even really any cuts made in the program. Um, and we had guys kind of shuttling down from varsity, playing some JV games uh, to have some bodies down there. I think so. Last year we had 36 in the program between the two teams. Um, and then so we graduated six seniors last year. Um, so I think we have 16 returning to the varsity. We usually like to keep the varsity at about 22. Um, so quick math there. I mean, we got about six spots. Um and then I think that freshman class is maybe around eight or so. 
that are coming in. So hopefully we're on the plus side of a couple more bodies that are in the program this year. Um, so I, you know, I, we have a lot of seniors too, uh, which is great. A real strong senior class. I think it's about, I think it's 11. Yeah. Um, and then we also have, um, five now sophomores, uh, that all, all five of them got time last year as freshmen. Uh, three of them got significant minutes. Uh, so really excited to see that jump that they make. Um, we actually don't have any current returning juniors to the varsity. Uh, so it's basically the, all the returners are either seniors or sophomores. Um, and then we'll be probably to looking to fill, um, a few spots at forward, um, and then a few spots on D as well. I give you credit, you and Coach Ferrari. Um, you're not afraid to play some of these underclassmen, you know, especially if they've earned it. They've gone out and shown you um, reasons to get into the lineup. They also have to, you know, show you reasons to earn playing time, and they have. Um, what can, what would you say to some of these underclassmen, or, or you know, freshmen, sophomores in particular, going out for this team that you might not have gotten a look at? Um, what are the things that they can do that are going to get on your radar that are going to get a call back for, um, you know, uh, the first week of playing with the older guys and then even maybe a, a preseason game, you know, what are those attributes that you're looking for where you're like, yep, this person, uh, I want to see more. Yeah. I think it's, uh, the, the details that we're really looking at, yeah. um, you know, coming in to that, that tryout week, I know you kind of didn't really touch upon it, but that, that week, Typically, we break down into the uh, upperclassmen and uh, underclassmen. Will depend on how the numbers. Haven't re- quite made that decision yet. But uh, in terms of you know, we're just looking for them. Make it sure it's you know you're on the ice for 60 minutes. Uh, you're guaranteed at least a couple couple of days out there. Just make it sure you're going 100 100 percent the whole time. And again, that attention to detail, like when we are scrimmage, you know changing up or getting that puck in deep, you know, it's great to score a goal, make a nice pass, get an assist. I mean, that's not going to, cause you scored a goal and tryouts is you're not going to make the team because of that. Um, it's those little things watching for those younger guys, they might be some new drills and, you know, making sure you're locked in watching wh- whatever coach Ferrari or myself drawing something up. Uh, or if we talk to you in the line, then putting that, to use in the next time through. There's obviously going to be mistakes made and it's okay to make mistakes. Uh, we all do that. I do that as a coach, um, but then just learning from it. Uh, so I think it's really those things and just that, that attitude, you know, looking at me in the eye and, mm-hmm. you know, taking what we're saying and paying attention, uh, I think goes a long way. Well, I was going to ask, in your opinion, what do you think makes for a good leader? You mentioned you have a lot of seniors returning. What what are some of the leadership qualities you look for them? And then a second part to that question is, who are some of the best leaders you've seen come through the hockey program in your time as coach? Yeah, um, I think really leading by example is a huge thing in my book. Um, you know, when times are tough or walls up against backs against the wall, like what are you going to do? How are you going to go out? Are you going to still be a good teammate? Um, you know, again, everyone makes mistakes. The course of a game, it's how you approach that if you're talking on the bench, you know, don't want to be, you know, seeing guys yell at each other or anything like that. Like have that everyone's at the end of the day, we all have the same goal at the end is, is to win. Um, so how do we get there? Um, and then, you know, just someone that's able to speak up in that locker room when, when it's needed and carry on our message. Um, you know, I always say to the guys and the message to the cap, you know, I want it to be their team. Um, and not my team or the coaching staff's team, um, take that on. And, you know, we're going to give you those reins until you show that, show us that, you know, you don't have the ability to do that. We've been lucky enough to, to have that, um, and go in and had, and have had great leaders. Um, there's honestly, Evan, there's so many to, to go through. Um, you know, one definitely sticks out from a couple of years ago, Zach Conway, um, you know, absolutely great leader um you know put his put his time in on on jv kind of had that COVID year which was you know not good for anyone but you know if that was a normal year probably would have had um even more opportunity and then you know comes into a senior year and just you know obviously his peers looked up to him and voted him a captain um 
And then he took that and ran, uh, which was great. And then another one that was actually a two-year captain as well, Danny Sullivan, um, a kid that came in as a little freshman, uh, playing, scoring big goals right from the beginning. And then just to see him progress and and be a two-year captain um, was really great to see. But, you know, those are two quick ones, but we've honestly been blessed to have really great captains here in the program. Now, Coach, you mentioned very heavy senior class this year. I think it's full of terrific leaders, um, and I love the way they play the game. They, they keep it simple. I can talk to, you know, uh, from coaching defense, seeing uh, Dume and, and um, McCabe, where their game was last year was remarkable. The, uh, the, the strides they've made, and, uh, you know, they were dominant on, on the back end, and I can't wait to see what they bring, you know, this year. And then when you add, you know, all the forwards, um, guys who finish their checks, guys who take it to the net, you know, kind of like that old school feel. How excited are you for the returners coming back? And how, how high is the ceiling, you know, do you think for this, this year's, uh, this upcoming season's team? Uh, yeah, I, I have high expectations um, on, this, on this season. And I think the guys do as well. Um, you know, speaking to that large senior class, I mean, just working way out, you know, we have Jack Holland coming back, um, you know, for TVL large goalie of the year, uh, first team TVL all-star, um, really solidified us, gave us a chance. I think it was 15 or 16 games last year, gave up two goals or less. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that gives us a chance to win every single night. Um, and that was his first year in that starting yeah. position. So he has that much more confidence and seeing what he's doing on the football field amazing. is amazing. And, yeah. you know, that's just going to give him even more confidence. Um, he's and got, then he's got ice in his veins, you know? Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's, it's so fun to watch. Love yeah. watching these guys play, uh, the other sports as well. Um, so shout out Jack and the, and the football team moving to the playoffs next week. Um, uh, but you know, then working to the, to the blue line there with how you mentioned with, Brady Dume and Josh McCabe, just to see where they've come. Brady, obviously, being a returning first team yeah. TBL All Star, had a great junior campaign um, and really had a great career here at Westwood so far, but really took it to that next level last year as one of the top defensemen in the TVL and honestly, all of probably D2, um, playing tons of minutes, all situations. And then Josh. You know, from where he's come and grown and improved from his freshman year up is absolutely amazing. Probably, I haven't probably seen a one single player make yeah. make an improvement like he has. Uh, so, which is just unbelievable, the work that he's put in and all that time that no one sees to yeah. then pay pay off on the ice. So, having those two monsters back yeah. there on the blue line is is awesome. Um, and then, obviously, the forward front got a you know a lot of guys that. I think we got a really strong yeah. top six. Um, and then um, also going to, I think we'll have a really good third line. And that's really important to me uh, to roll those guys. Huge. I mean, championship teams have a third line. You know, you see these two line teams and they get burnt out come playoffs and games are won, lost and closed in that third period. And you've done a, a terrific job of doing that uh, over the last years. And in combinations, you, I think one of the, the, uh, one of the uh, huge strengths you have is you do such a good job of finding the right combinations for lines. Um, and I, when we had Coach Welby on, we talked about you can have you know a first line, but each person has a different role on that line. You know, someone's the goal scorer, someone might be the goal scorer, someone might be the you know the, the 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 hammer and the nail. You know, going in, fighting for the puck in the corner, coming out with the possession, and uh, you know working it towards the net. You know, so I think that's something that you've done a terrific job. And then you do a good job of when you need to make adjustments, whether it's in game or whether it's, you know, after um, a certain point in the season. Um, you know, there's it's rare that you see a line that starts combinations that start at the beginning of the season and have that same combination towards the end. It kind of, you know, there's changes that that go through that. Um, but, yeah, it's I, I I think what I love most about this team, you know, mentioning how they keep it simple, but they're not afraid to get the ugly goal. And how great is ugly goals? And when I say ugly goals, it's pucks in front of the net, knock it in. You know, you didn't skate through three players, you know, make some, you know, uh, some nice moves and whatnot. You just put the puck in the net. And you know what? They count the same. You know, uh, how how much do you love to see a good, a good hard fought ugly goal? Oh, no, absolutely love it. I think we, <laughs> I think big golfer here myself. So use it, you know, no pictures on the scorecard. Yes. yes. There's no pictures on that scoreboard or, or, or what gets tweeted out or what goes up. Like it all, uh, it all, it all counts the same. So, I mean, 
you know, think of those guys. You know, we have hard nosed guys yeah. um, that do that. Go to the the dirty areas. You think of like a Timmy Malloy or yeah. you know, uh, uh, Sean Bloomquist. Yeah. Like they're not afraid to go to those areas, and you know that's why they get rewarded with pucks in the back of the net. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask about the TVL here. So you have Medfield recently just moved away to the TVL small. And when we talk to a lot of coaches from other sports, Medfield is often identified as that number one rival. You only have them once on the schedule this year. Is there another team that's going to move up into sort of that rival spot where you and the team kind of have them circled? Like that's the game we're really looking forward to and we want to win. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it was very surprising to see them kind of flip flop with Dedham, um, and just, you know, going back to when Morgan and I played, like that's been the rivalry, especially in hockey, um, with Medfield. Um, so one thing actually just, just got finalized the other day with, I think we'll get into obviously Ashland and Hollison co-oping in hockey. So kind of very late in the season to get non-league games (laughs) and work with, fit in dates so we're actually going to be playing medfield as a non-league game love as well that. love it um, home and home home and home Good. so they are they'll be hosting us for the tvl game but then we will be they'll be coming coming to the ice house uh for a non-league, non-league game yeah. so we yeah. will still get them and you know we had a couple of great games with them last Absolutely. year um so that's one big thing but i think it's been budding a little bit with, with Dedham. They've had some good teams the last couple of years, and I think they have a lot of guys back too. So now I think seeing seeing them twice in a season, that's going to build that rivalry uh, up for sure. It's got to be uh, tough for the McCabe's, you know, when it comes to Dedham week. But, you know, they, they bleed green now. Yeah. You know, they're, gotta, they're part of the, the good squad now. Exactly. The good, they're they're the good Wolverines. Um, who would you consider the rival now? So Medfield being in a TVL – uh, small, you're not going to be going up against them for a TBL title. You know, is it, is it Hopkinton now? Um, and, and would you also add Noah to that? You know, if you had to split hairs as well, who would you say uh, if you had to pick one? Um, I, yeah, it's, I would definitely probably Hopkinton just because, you know, some of the success <laughs> that they've had the last couple of years or just some of the things that have gone on between the two teams, um, you know, so I think that's definitely up there. They've they've been really good, but Norwood as well. I mean, both yeah. those teams have been just strong, not just TVL, but strong in D two and made really long runs in the state tournament. Um, and they're also the other D two teams like ourselves um, from the TVL. So definitely both of those. So I, I wouldn't single one out over the other, but I would say there's definitely a rivalry, and you know, between both those. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget a couple of years ago how intense the games were versus Hopkinton. Then we go out and get a, a first round upset, and who do we play in the playoffs? But Hopkinton, you know, in Hopkinton, so it's there's a bitter taste in my mouth um, yep. w- with them. And uh, you know, they're a good team. They had a terrific team then too, and, and they're going to have a great team this year. And certainly, um, you know, that rivalry. And then Norwood, cross uh, cross town, cross border rival. Um, the history there. Uh, we never really got to play them, you know, uh, on a non-league game. And then now we're playing them twice twice a year in, for a TVL title. So a lot's on the line for that. They're always a well-coached team. There's, you know, uh, Chuck, you know, uh, Chucky uh, does a great time, uh, a great job over there. And, you know, it made me think, you know, that's always been a tough game because they always, you know, each year they, they, they have new kids that come in, they plug in that, you know, pick up where, you know, the ball was, was, was left off and they, they, they continue to win. But last year, Westwood with a huge win. I believe, Evan, was it a live game? It wasn't live, but I was filming it. He was 3-2 filming. 3-2 overtime winner, Max O'Brien. Max goal. O'Brien. Yep. How, what a game. How awesome was that win? It was the first win over Norwood in, in, a, in a couple of years. Norwood's been, you know, uh, we, we did have a tie versus them, uh, but yeah. first uh, win. Um, in a couple of years, how rewarding was that? And in, in the fashion of how you guys won, it had to have been, you know, probably one of the best ones of the year. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, and for Obi to get that was yeah. was really special. Great, uh, awesome kid yeah. uh, in the program here for four years, and you know, to you know have kind of couldn't script it really any uh, a better way right off the face off there, and he buries it with a great shot. Um, and definitely, I mean, those last year seniors and captains, like they definitely had. Norwood, Medfield, you know, they had our number there for a couple yeah. of years and, you know, nothing doesn't sit well with any of us. So it's like, you know, to, to come out and to when, you know, the game's on the line to deliver like that was, was pretty special. 
It's huge. So the Canton Ice House, an amazing facility. Um, it's You have your own locker room there. Not every team has their own locker room. Boys and girls have their own locker room there. Um, you practice there. You play the games there. Um, it's really, you know, it, it's built for kind of a college team. You know, Curry College plays their, their home games there. Uh, how fortunate are you to have a rink like that as your home rink? I mean, there was we were at Ponca Pog for many years, and Ponca Pog is not that. The only what I like about Ponca Pog, it's like the dive bar of hockey rinks. You know, there's stuff dripping from the ceiling. You don't know what it is, but you you, you love it because it's our rink. However, the Ice House, just amazing facilities, state of the art for everything. For you know, every, anything you need as a, a coach, anything you need as a player. How special is it to call the Canton Ice House home? Yeah, it's been um, awesome. Just kind of where we've come, like the last couple of years with that. Um, you know, I never, I don't think we were ever in a bad situation. I love the back in the noble days and yeah. Ponky, yeah. like the way Ponky would get packed, uh, was special in its in its own way. But you know, to really have you know our home be there now, I know that the the guys, the boys, love the locker room, love having that. Um, it's pretty cool. Like you know, even just talking to guys that we played with, their alumni, or just they're like, you guys have your own locker room, yeah. like. And try to tell that to all, you know, now it's at this point, I think it's maybe year four coming up. Um, so now it's, you know, some of these guys that are in the program don't even probably think that we always kind of had this, yeah. but, you know, yeah. how privileged they are to, to have this and all these guys and everything that's come through here without that. So it is, it, you know, does get, you know, we take the bus from there on the way out. Like it's definitely a home base for us. Um, and I know the guys love it. They take care of us over there, um, you know, just trying to squeeze in an, another game with all these changes, yeah. um, which was great. So it's been a great relationship. you got a fantastic relationship because there's a lot of times where you might need ice at different times um, or playoffs. You want to get maybe some more ice um, at, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock, um, you know, just to give some more energy going into some of the games. Um, but fantastic uh, relationship that you've had there that have really been so beneficial for Westwood in the program the last several years. Yeah, abso absolutely. It's, it's also one of my favorite places to film games. I mean, we had some great games. The Norwood game is one of my favorites. Um, and Morgan mentioned you guys not only play there, but you practice there. And Morgan has told me about the 5 a.m. practice tradition that you guys have kept since the 80s. What are some of the benefits you see with the players and some of the character building things that you've seen with those 5 a.m. practices and how beneficial and positive that's been for players you've coached throughout the years? Yeah, uh, definitely. And now with once uh, school got pushed back last year, so now we're at 6 a.m., but still. Uh, you guys so getting soft. I, I know. It's <laughs> it's tough. It, it is a huge – that uh, alarm clock from 4.15 to 5.15 is a big difference. But, um, you know, I think it's just a, a – a, it's just a tradition of the program that the kids really buy in and really honestly like don't have issues with. Um, you know, I think if you look at how successful some of our players have been, like, you know, take hockey outside of it. At the end of the day, we want to make boys into men and, um, you know, put them on a successful place going, going off to college or whatever that next step may be in the workforce. Um, and I think it, it's really that responsibility of you got to take care of your, your schoolwork, your body, all those different things um, that, you know, you just learn from doing that and having that routine where, you know, go off to college and you have that 8 a.m. class and no one's telling you to go to sleep or do anything like that. And but you have, you know, that background in the, in the hockey program. And I mean, I think it i doing it myself for four years. Uh, I think once you get used to it, like you actually embrace it, you love it. Um, you know, no other teams in the TBL or, or really for that matter in the state, some teams might do it once in a while um, as like a punishment or something like that. But it that's not the way we look at it at all. Um, and, you know, where will everyone else sleep and we're getting better. Um, and so, yeah. I think it definitely creates a mental edge. Um, you know, and I think come third periods, you need that um, willpower to get yourself over the, you know, get yourself across the line. Uh, you might be double shifting come third period. There's special teams, power plays, penalty kills, and you might be playing both, and then you're doing your regular shift. Uh, so to have that uh, extra um, gear because you're doing – a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you're waking up early and these practices aren't easy. They're hard practices. You know, we skate. 
Uh, we have, you know, there was high expectations for these practices and how to run them. And uh, I think it not only um, is an advantage come game time, but as you mentioned, it really does um, turn us into men a lot quicker than when we leave high school and we start to go to college and we have to deal with more responsibilities. What what you do with the program is is you're making these kids responsible at an earlier age. If they're going to miss practice, you have rules for that. They have to call you. It's got to be by a certain time. Um, practices it starts at five or five fifteen, whatever it is. It's not five sixteen. It's not five oh one. Kids are on the ice ten minutes before. So these examples that are set through the game of hockey and the Westwood hockey program that's been going on for you know countless years is also part of the winning culture. So we've talked about culture and how it's spanned over decades. And there is no better use case, folks, than Westwood Hockey. 41-year playoff streak um, of essentially 41 years of Westwood making the playoffs all in a row. Only team to have even uh, made it that far. I think the closest is in the 20s right now. Um, and this is back. This is old school, too. This is you had to win. Uh, you had to get 20 points. Now, like, it's different. You can still get into the playoffs with, uh, with a, you know, less than 20 points if you had a, a higher ranking. So, you know, that, that only started recently with the power ranking. So this was hard to get uh, to the playoffs and to qualify and to do it for that long. Probably one of the, I think, the most amazing, I think, accomplishments in, in Westwood sports. How proud are you to have been a part of 19 of those, four as a player, 15 as a coach, and talk us through too. It's on your mind. It's on Coach Ferrari's mind. Um, it's it's on your mind during practicing games. You know, talk us through kind of uh, how how you use it as a motivator, and 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 you know how you want to continue that streak for years and years to come. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely special um, to have that. That you know, it, no one's even close to us with that. And just I mean, to think about just at this point, there's been parents and or yeah. parents and then their kids that have like been part of it which is just amazing um to see that kind of happen and again just speaks to the tradition uh of the program but uh yeah it's definitely something that's on our mind it's on the captains it's really on that senior class like you don't want to be obviously that one that you know lets it slip or something like that um so definitely it's a motiv motivating factor um you know, we have three goals basically every season. Number one is obviously to qualify for the state tournament. And, um, you know, the, the first one we're looking to check off. Um, and, you know, we've been fortunate to have these winning records even in, in this new rankings era. But, you know, I think we would all, we, we got to be over over 500. Uh, we're not sneaking in by some loophole way of, yeah. of, of this new rankings. But, um definitely something that the kids think about um you know at times it can be probably a little daunting if you don't get off to that great start and um sometimes the schedule has been tough at the beginning of the year and you get behind it a little bit but kind of once you get that groove and start picking off some wins um and then i think it's just a big momentum we've had we've had the ability to really once we have qualified to really that's a big confidence boost for the kids and then to carry that momentum through uh, into the end of February and ultimately into the state tournament, which has been a really positive part of it as well. Yeah, I mean, I've had a front row seat for a couple years. And uh, one thing I give you credit for is you you put together a very challenging schedule. Um, and it's usually at the beginning of season two, you know. So there has been those seasons where we started off, you know, two and four. or And, and you know what, you've you've done a good job of, Seeing, I say this a lot, but seeing the forest through the trees, you know, you know that we're going to get better. You know that we're going to have, you know, come uh, the Christmas, uh, you know, the holiday season, that there is a good week of practice where we can continue to sharpen uh, special teams, power play, penalty kill. Also get some good hard practices in that really uh, build our confidence up. Um, but I give you credit. I mean, those games early on, it's always a Canton game every year. And you guys are always, you know, giving them a really good test every single year. And, you know, one of these years, you know, soon Westwood's going to come out with a big win over Canton. Canton's been a top team in Division Two for like the last decade. Um, but uh, you, you load it. You, you have uh, King Philip on the schedule. 
a really talented uh, team. And um, you're going to play them at home this year, I understand. Yep, yeah. yeah. They're uh, coming to us, so added them last year. We had a – I think it was – ended up we lost 2-1 to one out, one. over at Foxborough. It was a great game. Um, you know, they had a really strong team last year, and I know they will again. Yeah. Big, big, tough team to play against. Um, you know, probably probably the toughest that we played on the schedule in terms yeah. of, you know, the physicality that oh, they yeah. bring. Um, so I think if you could play in those games, you know, then you get that confidence. You could yeah. play against anyone. Heard there was a few penalties that game. Um, or a few. But uh, when it goes to, when it comes to your looking at the, the, the schedule and um, finding non-league opponents, obviously this year is different because you kind of had a situation, you know, come up with the – uh, with Ashland and Holliston coming together, and then you got to find two games, you know. But say it's uh, you have well, uh, you know, you have months in advance to kind of put together your schedule. What is your mindset into picking your those non league games? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think especially now with the way the ranking system works, like you know, we we do play a lot of D three and D four teams in the TVL. Um, and just really how it's all like spread out. I don't really know how it all gets done, but yeah. it's seems a little creative at times. Um, but anyway, like that definitely even beating some of those teams and some of those teams are very good. It's like a medfield that's, yeah. you know, D3, yeah. um, you know, like, DS. Yeah. A top DS, 20 team at one know, point last year. Exactly. Yeah. And they're state they're champion at D4. Um, so, you know, so I think getting D2 teams that we could play against. They're not all, but for the most part, um, like King Phillip, mm-hmm. Canton, uh, North Attleboro, Oliver Ames, so strong, like some strong teams from the Hockamuck. They're, you know, relatively close to us as well. Um, and teams that are perennial, like in that Division Two state state bracket. So um, playing against them, we also, you know, had a longstanding relationship with, uh, with Linfield as well. They're D3. They were, when we first started playing, they were D2 and yeah. we were D3. And now yeah. that's flip flopped. Yeah. Uh, but they've had some really strong teams. Um, so, and then this year adding in um, Dartmouth, um, a strong D2 independent team yeah. um, that, you know, had, you know, we had a really good game with them in, in the state tournament a couple of years ago. Yeah. Unfortunately, lost it overtime, but good to get another crack at them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's really trying to find teams that are going to give us competitive games. Like, you know, those are all winnable games, but you know, no, certainly no layups or anything that it's a, it's not a point night or anything like that. Like we got, it's going to be a tough, it's a tough two points Mm -hmm. uh, against any of those teams. We, uh, we talked with head coach Mike Welby, uh, about a month back. And one thing we talked about is how I said, the, how amazing Westwood hockey is in the town and how it has been for quite some time. And I mentioned how my father used to take me to uh, to those playoff games that he, he played in. And he said, watch this kid, number four. He's amazing. He When he touches that puck, it's it's magic. Like, he, he's a difference maker. And he was so proud to, like, be able to have this opportunity for a game that my dad loved, he played, you know, uh, growing up, he played high school and college. But to be able to show his kids um, what Westwood's doing and what the possibility and opportunities are out there for his kids um, and to really light the fire within us of, um, wow, these guys live in the same town and they're doing it on the biggest stage and these guys are my heroes. I want to be like that. And Mike said... It's funny you say that. I watched the guys in the early 80s with my brother. We have that same feeling. I remember when I was a freshman uh, playing for Mike um, on our run, I'd see you in the stands um, with, you know, Joe Young and and, uh, Drew Holden. And, you know, probably no two more special players, you know, at that time than the Holdens. Were those kids that you looked up to? And I know you were number 14. Was there any reason behind choosing 14 with, uh, you know, that being Phil's number? Yeah, definitely. It was all all Phil. Um, so never had worn it prior to, to high school. It was always number two. But um, just like you were saying, so, you know, even started before that, like my dad would take me, um, I think when we moved to Westwood, I was like six. Uh, so started kind of going right away. And I mean, always like that's those are my idols. That's what I looked up to. 
And then I think it definitely took uh, a turn there, like in middle school, you know, was was best friends with Drew Holden, younger brother, Tim and Phil. Uh, don't think we missed a game with that no. crew of buddies. Uh, I think there's what you were talking. There's a great picture, I think, of all of us in the stands at, at Walter Brown when yeah. you guys beat Blue Hills. Uh, like, you know, some a memory that I always remember. But yeah, I mean, it was always, especially being a golfer myself, like looking up to Tim and Phil. They were huge role models, always great to me, gave me the time of day when I would see them. Um, you know, it's they're, I think, like four years older, but, you know, it seemed like they were, you know, a lot more than that at the time. It's a lot different now, but um, absolutely, like, that was, I was like, okay, like, I want to be them. I want to, so that, that was the whole reason, kind of the switch and yeah. get number 14. Yeah. And you had an amazing career as a, as a player. Um, you right out of the gate, playing as a freshman, playing as a, a sophomore on, on the top lines for, for Coach Mike Welby. And uh, you guys continued the tradition. You had some great teams as well. And I remember uh, it was an overtime winner that you were part of. Uh, was it your senior year? Yeah, senior year. Yeah, um, yeah talk about in the, the memories. In the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, talk about the memories at Ponky. Yeah. Uh, absolutely packed. So it's like, you know, can't – it was a great, great barn for us. Um, uh, obviously, you know as well. Teams absolutely hated hated oh, yeah. coming there with the the small ice surface, and yeah. So, um, and then yeah. So it was me and Jimmy Gavin as a line, uh, and we had freshman Steve McManus, and ended up. Uh, Jimmy didn't get an assist on that, but he definitely should have. I think the clip from Coach Welby is it's still on, still on YouTube, yeah. but. Uh, Gav definitely deserved an assist up to me, and then it was a two-on-one, and freshman, uh, the Bengal Eliminator, I think that's what it is up yeah. there. Uh, McManus putting that home, but great memory. That was a great run. It's kind of just a start for us, uh, you know, winning two games, going three rounds that senior year. It's like, you know, that's yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah, I remember seeing that clip of that goal, and the the, the barn was packed. It was super loud. And this is back when it was like flip phones. So I don't know who got it, but yeah. like, you know, it was, it was still a great clip, but what a, what a memory, you know, what are some of your favorite memories from your playing days? You know, any ones that come, come to mind in addition to that? Yeah. Um, I def, you know, just seeing how good you guys were like, I think it was your, obviously your, you winning your freshman year, your freshman, sophomore teams, how good they were. And then coming in, you were captain junior. I was, freshman obviously fortunate enough to make the team and you know and got a few shifts here and there played a little bit um and then you know really moving up making that next step as a sophomore um you know I think just how cool it was to just not maybe one in specific game or something like that but I mean I think obviously we made the playoffs each year going going to do that just how you know, the community behind us, how packed Ponky used to be, those battles with back then, like Collison, Medfield, um, were just always, you know, you had to bring your best and it was, it was a battle out there. Um, and so those are definitely memories that I think about. Um, and then, um, you know, just all the relationships and the things that you yeah. carry and you remember and kind of remember like it was yesterday. Um, just a funny one that we have you on. I think it was that first game out at uh, East Boston as a sophomore. Yeah. Uh, and they were actually pretty good back then. Um, and center and your two brothers, center, center and Charlie Donahue and, and Matt Donahue. Um, yeah. I think they, they fought on the bench the entire game. And yeah. so that was a, that experiment lasted one game, one game but <laughs> Um, Gosh. just got us some, some funny things like that, that we yeah. could still laugh about now and still have those, those friends and relationships that we played together. I think the cool thing back then is how it really was. You just, you see firsthand how important this program is to, um, the alum and they come back and the alumni game used to be so popular. You had to do two games. You had to do an older, yeah. older, uh, group and a younger group. Um, but they still surround themselves uh, with the program. They're at the games. They're reaching out to you, saying congrats after big wins. A lot of them have kids, you know, in the program. You got, uh, you know, you had Cox, Brian Cox, and then uh, uh, Blumquist as well, and many others. Um, but you also had back in the day, like uh, Coach Mullen, who who came back in the program to be, you know, help out with the stats. Nolte, uh, McCusker, McDonald, uh, Welby, all Westwood guys. 
They all know what it's like to put that jersey on. And they all know how difficult these 5 a.m. practices are and balancing a school schedule and, you know, the ups and downs of the season and whatnot. Um, but it's special to know and have those people around you. And, you know, they they might not be on the putting the skates on and, and, and going on the ice with you, but you feel that they are a part of that team. Um, and that was something that I think was was special. And it's still to this day go to these games, I see Conway there, I see Foley, I see, um, you know, a lot of the alums coming to the games um, during Christmas break, and they're not just coming to one, they're, they're there like almost every game. Um, so yeah. it really speaks volumes, I think, to the program. Um, and uh, before I get into kind of more of the, the family um, component, um, you have a big family of Westwood, you know, hockey and alums and, and, and whatnot, but you also have a big family in Norfolk. Uh, no Fork Golf Course, a very special place, place you've been, you know, pretty much your whole life. Yeah. Um, they're always supportive. They're at games. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, they're always rooting for you. Coach Ferrari, a member up there as well. Um, McCabe, um, you know, uh, Coach McCabe as well. Uh, how special is the group at Norfolk and how supportive have they been for you over the years? And, uh, you know, do you want to give any special shout outs to some of the beauties over over at Norfolk? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, um, you know, definitely I think been there since my dad joined when I was like four. So it's been like over 30 years at this point and even been a member myself since I was 10. So, um, you know, and, and even just all the connections of Westwood hockey with also um, with Norfolk Golf Club, you know, we have a ton of members now um, that are on the on the current team. Yeah, that's on true. The so there's that too. There's a lot of dynamics with it. A lot of families that are members. So, you know, it's, it's really great just to see them year round and, and have those interactions that are away from the rink as well, uh, which I definitely value. But yeah, I mean, those, those guys are definitely at a lot of the games, um, you know, that really aren't even from Westwood or don't have a connection to <laughs> a specific connection to the program. But um, yeah, they're always there that, you know, always supporting and especially as we get you know closer to the playoffs and when we ultimately hopefully make it for a 42nd consecutive year but you know those things are you know it's it's special to have that uh support so coach you're uh your father now um and uh that is certainly going to make it a little more challenging with uh balance you know yeah and being a dad and also being a, a hockey coach and we're not talking about normal uh practice hours you know so how do you balance um, being a dad and also the kind of the demanding and unpredictability of the uh, hockey season? You obviously have an amazing partner helping out, but what can you what can you say about balancing that and also the great support system you have? Uh, yeah, um, you know it's it's great to have have my son Cal now. Uh, just turned a, a year in September, so coming up on fourteen or so months here, be about fifteen as as the puck drops on the season. Um, you know, but. Obviously, would not be able to do any of this without my wife, Abby. Um, you know, she's always been supporting there, you know, all these Wednesday and Saturday nights and could uh, could be off doing a lot of other things even before we, we had Cal. But, you know, she loves being at the games and being there. And, you know, obviously the early morning, she hears that alarm clock, too, or rustling, getting all the stuff on and out the door. Um, you know, but she's the best. Um, wouldn't be able to do it without her and especially now you know she's got a lot on her plate if i'm away with with the team uh and she's got cal but you know just to see him at the games was, was so cool last year obviously yeah. he was a little a baby in in the carriage things will look a little different this season um you know I'm, he loves to bang on glass and all those different things so i'm sure you, you might see him uh up on the glass banging on it for the wolverines or just you know looking forward to those opportunities to have him pop into the locker room, see the guys um, now that he kind of kind of gets what's going on a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, just wouldn't be able to do it, obviously, without Abby. So she's amazing. I see her at, you know, every game and um, she, Cal's there too. Cal's, yeah. you know, uh, Cal's, you know, one and two biggest fans, you know, right there cheering you on every game. And I'd be remiss not to say when I when I talk about Westwood, hockey culture and you know the family it's it's it goes beyond the players it's the wives it's the parents it's yeah. also norfolk 
they're all in tune. They want to know what's going on. They're rooting from near, rooting from afar. So, you know, very big part of the, the Westwood Hockey family because um, you, you can't do what you're doing for as long as you're doing without an amazing support system that you have. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the hockey boosters and the parents we're so fortunate to have and something that, Huge. you know, I always make a point of, you know, telling to the boy, you know, thank your parents. This, yes. You know, not every kid gets this opportunity to grow up in Westwood or, you know, just much just broader outside of hockey, but, and then the support that we have from them. And, you know, there's so many parents that step up every year to that's running the, all the pasta dinners, the chuck a puck, all the fundraisers, all the different things, like so much time goes into it. Um, and it's, you know, something that is off my plate and they take care of and that's huge. And it's just always been the way, like we've never, I know that's, you know, I hear from other coaches or other things like that's not everywhere. Um, so to have that, so, you know, the support from, from the parents is huge. Um, and you know, the boys should, I know I'm very fortunate and lucky to have that. And, you know, and then just even into the support, you know, and just like this, you know, my staff, um, you know, be remiss not to bring them up. Yep, um, absolutely. you know, been really fortunate to have so many great assistants and guys that have coached JV on being yourself, um, helping out with both teams. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I think boys will tell you too, you know, coach Ferrari has to have a shout out here. Absolutely. Um, wouldn't be able to do this without him. He's almost like that associate head coach or co-head coach, if you will. And, you know, you know, you've been there firsthand, Morgan, uh, and the boys will tell you, you know, he, he's running practice. He's doing a lot of those things that I might get some credit for, good or bad, whatever it may be. But, um, you know, he puts in so much time and obviously it's just amazing what he does. And I said, you know, when Coach Welby retired, I wouldn't have taken this next step and become the head coach without Dan. Um, so I am so thankful for him, uh, and his friendship and just love doing it with mm-hmm. him as well. Um, and then, you know, all the, like yourself, having, uh, coach McCabe, coach McCabe senior there for yeah. a year, uh, legend. hall of famer legend, mm-hmm. just to have him and learn from him. Yeah. Uh, and then just all the guys that we've had, you know, in the JV as well. Um, Coronto, you know, Kevin yeah, Coronto. Kevin, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped in last year. Uh, he's been awesome. And then, you know, you have Chris Ruggiero, German Gallagher, Owen Fox, uh, Brett Hetnick, all guys that I coached <laughs> that are alumni uh, that have been a part of this over the last six years at the JV level, helping out varsity when they can. Um, you know, really that behind the scenes that those guys don't get enough credit. Um, and then obviously we had Coach Caranto come in, take over. JV last year, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, Hall of Famer himself over at Dedham High. Baseball assistant with Coach Whalen. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Loves the two coaches, a couple sports here at the high school. Yeah. So, you know, totally gets our culture and totally bought in on it. Um, and then we'll have Nikita Manakin, who will be joining the staff this year as nice. well. Uh, nice. 2020 graduate of Westwood yeah. High and obviously fortunate enough to coach him. Went on, had a great uh, club career at UMass Amherst yeah. and he's back. So eager, you know, just to always have, I think it was something that coach Welby instilled, you know, having those alumni coming back and it's just a tradition that, you know, is, is ongoing here. Yeah. I, you look at the guys like Ferrari, um, McCabe, both McCabe's Caranto, they, they didn't, they didn't go to West at high school, but they love this program. They love this town. Ferrari grew up in this town. Um, Westwood hockey means so much to him. Um, if you were to amateurize what they get paid and spread it over the amount of practices, games, you know, film and all that, I'd probably say they, they're making about uh, 10 cents an hour. Um, so it's all love. It's all the love of the game, the love of coaching these kids, um, turning them into young men. And uh, it really says how special they are you know, what they're doing and um, the sacrifices they make. These are full-time, uh, they have full-time jobs, you know, so they're doing this on top of uh, a nine-to-five and no one really has nine-to-five these days. It's, you know, whenever you got to get your work done, you also got to travel. Um, so to do that, he's driving out to like, you know, uh, Fall River or uh, after practice. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, so just uh, amazing resources that you got, character guys, 
very smart hockey guys and, and great complimentary additions, um, you know, with yourself by, you know, pre having a, an amazing coaching staff that's going to teach these kids not only, um, you know, uh, great things in hockey, but how to, how to get them ready for life. You know, it's, uh, it's remarkable. And I'd be remiss not to mention uh, uh, someone special to all of us, but also your father, Bill Siebert. The voice of Westwood hockey. I think he's 20 plus years now into uh, being the voice. Um, he's been there for all the home games. He's even at the away games, you know, and been an amazing support system. How special is it uh, to have him involved in the program? You guys talking throughout, you know, before games, in between periods. You know, it's a really cool rapport that you guys have, and to be able to have this together. Um, how special uh, is it to have Dad there and? And what can you say about him and the impact he's had on Westwood hockey? Because when I think about the face of Westwood hockey, I think of obviously Mike Welby. I think of Matt Siebert. Um, but I undoubtedly think about Bill Siebert. Anytime I think about Westwood hockey, boys and girls, he is a uh, he's a staple that will be in my head forever when it comes to, you know, the special sport. Yeah, um, he absolutely loves it. Um, so I think, I mean, he's obvious. He's actually, well been involved for a really long time i think so my going back how it started my freshman year i think those first couple games we were on the road we're out at like loring playing ashland or whatever and their games are getting announced um and then nothing's going Nothing. on at our and he's like what what's going on here like <laughs> so obviously he has a background uh in radio uh I was on radio for for years um so hopped right in and you know went to it was Palmer at the time that was yeah. the athletic director and was like, Hey, do you mind if I do this or is this something? And it was like, yeah, absolutely. We've never had anyone. And then it kind of just morphed obviously from there. Yeah. I don't think he's missed a game ever since. So that's, I think two, I was 2003, Oh four season. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, for those first few years would do the, the girls too, if we weren't on the road or mm -hmm. something like that. And then once I graduated, you know, he went full time with the girls as well, doing all that. Um, but I know the the boys absolutely love it as well. I mean, it really gives us that vibe, gives us that energy, um, you know, whether it's a five o'clock game on Wednesday or that, you know, seven o'clock game on Saturday. It, it doesn't matter the energy he brings with that starting lineup and how professionally it's done. Um, you know, I probably take it for granted a little bit yeah. being his son, but I know the the boys definitely don't um and love that and i know the girls do as well i just see like the interactions he also does it for like the canton boys and girls and severian, severian now did a uh state championship at the garden yeah he's done like a number <laughs> of other ones been fortunate he's been in the garden the last couple of years for for the hockey state championships uh so really cool just to hear his his voice there now we just need to get there so he's announcing us but um, you know, just special how much he cares about it and how, you know, buttoned up and professionally is with it. Uh, and I know he, he absolutely loves it. Yeah. Um, so it's created quite the atmosphere, uh, for us. And I get it even when we go on the road or go other places, you know, now it's like a known commodity, a lot of, a lot of people bringing them up. And then I'm like, yep, that that's my dad. So there's nothing that gets me more fired up than when he finishes the away team and he goes, and now for your starting lineups for your Westwood Wolverine. It's fired up. Hair stands up, you know, and the boys, you know, when they hear their name, they have a little pep in their step, you know, and uh, it's just a huge advantage. You know, it really um, is part of the home ice advantage. Um, so yeah. shout out, Bill, you know, <laughs> big, uh, huge uh, contributor to the Westwood High School hockey culture program uh, over the last several years. Um when when you hear the words Westwood hockey, you know, what what thoughts, what feelings come to mind? And also, what do you want your legacy to be when it comes to Westwood hockey? Yeah, um, I, when I think about Westwood hockey, think about their tradition, um, the passion that all the players and everyone that's come through this program have for it and how much respect for it. And, you know, we're known out there that, you know, we are well respected um program i think that means a lot to me obviously we want to rack up the wins and ultimately state championships which you know we've been successful over the years with some of those things but it, it's more of just how we go about um uh, and the the 
men that come out of the program um, is, you know, the, the most important thing to me. Um, you know, I obviously, this is like a dream job for me. I wouldn't want to do this anywhere else. Um, you know, it's, it's the Y Westwood. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just watching it, you know, looking up to these guys and then the next progression of, of playing, um, being able to coach with coach Welby for all that and learn from him. Um, and then obviously have the ability to, to take over the reins, um, you know, means the world to me. Um, my most favorite time of the year, like, you know, get getting so excited, you know, obviously the practices and then, you know, there's nothing like those, those game nights. Um, but yeah, I would hope that, you know, these guys are, are, you know, have positive things to, to say about me and just the culture that we've built and the family that we are in there, um, are, is big to me. Um, and yeah, of course we, we want to win at the end of the day, but, I want them to all look back at their high school hockey pro uh, experiences in a positive light. Um, and, you know, it's obviously, I think for the most part, we've, we've done that. Um, you know, a lot of it's, you brought up like all those guys coming back, like there's nothing better than those home games and whether, so each period walking, yeah. walking by all those guys and getting that quick, hi, hello, or whatever it may be from all those alumni, like that's huge. That makes my day. Um, seeing those guys and, you know, I think, you know, hopefully I'm part of that reason why, why they're back. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the reason why they come back is not only to see their, 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 their guys, their team, but to see coach, you know, and to check in and Hey coach, guess what? I'm doing this. You know, it's great to hear the updates from the kids and hearing their successes, you know, it's the best. I feel like Um, you're part of the fabric of, you know, setting them up for these things. Absolutely. And just seeing how much they grow, just it's, it's amazing just to even see them like not even quite a, or maybe just a semester in like that difference they are. Um, it, it is just so cool to see. And then what they go on, go on to do, um, and have a number of relationships with these guys still text with a ton of them, uh, or, you know, run into them. It's like no time has passed, uh, <laughs> Pick up which, where is, it's left off. Yeah. which is, yeah, it's just so cool. And then like, part of me is like, wow, I'm getting, pretty old that where some of these guys are at or been been at this for a long time but it that's it's it's about them um at the end of the day and that's the most important thing and something that i think is special uh to westwood coach looking ahead to this season what game are you looking forward to the most this year ah tough question having on the spot here Mm um i think I, I think that Canton one of the boys always circle it. Um, you know, we do as well. Um, I think, you know, they're, they've set the bar um, for D2. And honestly, they could play in D1 easily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what they've done for a number of years, obviously had our number, have the utmost respect for Coach Schumann, um, Westwood High School teacher. Um, Shout out, Coach. Yep. Coach Shu is the best. Uh, learned a lot from him just over the years. I actually had him his first year teaching at uh, Westwood High when I was a junior. Uh, so maybe I can make him feel a little old too. But, <laughs> um, you know, just th- what he's built there and what he's done, like that's what we're striving to get to and to be um, and just have so much respect for them. But, you know, we had a really close game with them last year. I think it could have went our way. Um, obviously it didn't, but you know, that one is one that's definitely circled. It's kind of that measuring stick, especially early in the season where we have, we do have a lot of guys coming back. Like we really hope to get off to a good start here. Um, so that, that's probably number one. Um, just cause then you kind of know where you stand in D2. Obviously it's in December. We're going to have a couple more months to hopefully get to where we want to be. Um, and then, you know, those Hopkinton games, Norwood games, Medfield games, like those are always um, getting up for. But, you know, at the end of the day, too, like they're all they're all two points and something that we want to get to the boys, too. They're they're all all important. But obviously, there's a little bit more emotion in some of them. Well, what's interesting about those Canton games, because you guys play in the Canton Ice House, which is in Canton. Yeah. But the Den does show up really well for the hockey games. Yeah. So. There's no true home ice advantage for Canton, even though it's in Canton. It seems more like it's Westwoods. 
do you think that plays sort of into the game when you have a good energy from the fans, especially even against Canton, where even though Canton, it's closer for those students, you still have a good showing from Westwood High School students? Yeah, uh, it definitely means the world to the boys. And even I, like, I mean, I'm a coach and 36 years old, but like when you see the uh, the 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 whole section filled in like that, that's just that support behind you. Like you got to have a little extra jump in your step um and go out and you know finish that hit or make that extra play or whatever like that's giving you that energy uh so it's great to see but yeah i mean it that support that we've had from the the student body uh all the teachers that come to the game again alumni all and then all the parents the friends like we've been lucky and fortunate enough to have that even on the road in a lot of places so um something that we definitely hope to continue on this season uh last couple questions coach uh you did something that um, very few um, coaches in the TVL have done. You had an undefeated TVL season. You won the TVL 2019? Yeah. Um, and you went undefeated. How special was that season for you, and how special was that team? Yeah, so that was uh, first year as the head coach. Um, and, you know, that was a really great group. Um, that senior class, like, ex- still extremely close with them. Um, you know, think of – is that Cronin? Uh, yep, Shane yeah. Cronin, um, Calgarino, Connor Donahue were the, the captains. Hamilton, older brother on that team? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Matty Hetnick, yep. just could literally go down the whole roster. Like Great players. How, you know, they they ha- we had a pretty good, like when they were all juniors and obviously Welby's last year, we, we had a good season. Um, obviously, shout out to him. He didn't leave me high and dry there. We had a good foundation. Um and then coming in, that was when Coach Ferrari, he was coaching JV with yourself, I believe. And then he made that jump up to the varsity. Again, going back to wouldn't have done it without him. Um, and then so we, we tweaked some things, but it was really that foundation that was was put in place from from previous years. And we just had those that commitment. And, you know, I look back at like that team, like this kind of similar to what we're coming into this year. Uh, which, you know, a lot of guys coming back and a lot of guys had breakout years that year. Like it could be just a huge mm-hmm. jump from that junior to senior year, like Thank kind you. of knowing it's it's your last year of high school. It could be your last year of playing hockey, whether going on to club or something like that. It's never really going to be the same. You're not playing for your town. Um, you know, something that don't take for granted. I know that you, we would look back. We would love another game. I would yep. die to put the skates on one more time uh, for Westwood. So I think – you know, that team, it was just really cool to go through the TVL. Um, you know, we did have, like, we did have some ties or a good amount. I think we went ultimately 16, two and six that year. Like if we didn't have to play Canton, we yeah. would have been undefeated <laughs> with everyone, but, um, probably one of the best high school teams I've ever seen Canton, um, that year, yeah. uh, with the, they could have made the super eight. Yeah. yeah. They, they should have, sh- they should have, yeah. um, which whatever that might have put us in a little different place uh, come the D two tournament, but ultimately going to the the South sectionals, one win away from the Garden with that team. Obviously losing to Canton, um, you know, still have great memories of that and see those guys around. And you know, now they're all out of college, and you know, it's it's pretty cool to see and to look back. And uh, it's honestly crazy too that it was like six years ago at this yeah, point. But time flies. And uh, last question, we've kind of been asking this more uh, with, with the sports coaches. Um, favorite favorite hockey movie? You know, we, in particular, we'll say, what's your favorite sports movie that, that's aligned to their sports? So favorite favorite hockey movie? Uh, so I, I got to go Mighty Ducks. Wow. Um, okay. I know. There's, there's a, there's a lot connection. there. Yeah. yeah, just I think going back to just a kid. Yeah. Uh, and if it's still on or – I, I may own it on the DVR and have yeah. to throw it on once in a while. So one over the other, one, two, or three. I would go. I would go D two. The, Oli- Team the USA. Olympics. Uh, uh, was junior that the Olympics? Goodwill? The games. Goodwill Games. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool. Just can always watch that. Watched it probably a thousand times over. So yeah. looking forward to Love watching that. those with with Cal here soon. Oh, yeah. But well, Coach, we're so thankful to have you on. Uh, we're very excited for the season. We can't wait to cover games. Um, we're even having some. Uh, potential conversations about doing um, working collaborations. We did a, uh, I did a collaboration with Norwood Community Media for football, and we're talking about maybe doing, um, you know, an away game as well uh, for Norwood Community Media and also HCAM, Tom yeah. Nappy, you know, awesome. where we used to watch the video, the, the game film on the way home. There was nothing better when we'd 
go out there, play Hopkinton, then we watch we watch it on the on the ride back. You know, they do a terrific job as everyone in the in the um, TVL, the media uh, companies, media, uh, town uh, community media is amazing. Um, but we're looking forward to covering it. Um, cannot wait for the season, and want to wish you the absolute best of luck. And uh, yeah, really appreciate you coming on and uh, and talking shop with us. Yeah, no, I really, again, appreciate both of you uh, having me. Obviously, had some great guests, and it's a great thing and great exposure. So I just have to give thank you to you guys, Evan, Morgan, like just everything you're doing, building this up. Like, it's it's so cool to see. And I know it's not something that we had when we played here. And I think back then, you know, have like some of the more of the, the in-print media, the, yeah, the yeah. Transcript, transcript was cool. And like, that was like your thing. And now it kind of just went away and it's great. All the stuff is on social media, but like to have this, to be able to tune in and, and see the interviews on field with the football guys last night um, is, is so cool to see. So really appreciate what you guys are doing and, and giving the, you know, our athletes the opportunity to, to, to get a, get that exposure. Um, and I know they really appreciate it. I know the hockey guys are looking forward to it. So thank you both. Well, I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it. Well, thank you again, Matt. And, Folks, thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of the Wolverine Report. Looking forward to seeing you all on the next one.